Well, good morning. How do I sound? I sound okay? Can you hear me? Too loud? I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to do that. I'm not a yeller. Of course, you never know what's going to happen later. As we are, <coughs> Pastor um, Len, we've been doing, working in Ephesians. So we're kind of all kind of going to, the folks who are going to be sharing with you, next few Sundays are going to be going on Ephesians. Then into Exodus later. But right now we're going to just keep on going. We're going to keep doing that. So, <coughs> I was asked, what's your title? What's the, what's the title of your sermon or your speech? And I said, I don't know. I ain't got one. And I sat there and I had to think about it and I, well, who I am. So. <laughs> so. Okay. Give me the first frame there. Be still. And know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heaven, and I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know that I am God. For whether two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Now the Lord is that <clears throat> now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty Amen. and freedom and other versions. As you guys know me, that's, those are my sayings. So, Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. If you be here, there's two or more gathered here. And let there be freedom and liberty. In Jesus' name. In Ephesians chapter 5, I'm going to read 15 to 20. Ephesians 5, 15 to 20. So be careful how you live, not as fools, but as those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill and control you. Then you will sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your hearts. And you will always give thanks for everything to God the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and I was sitting there and I was thinking, well, I need to recap. I need to recap what's uh, been going on the last couple Sundays. And the message is that uh, Pastor Lynn had given. So I'm going to try to do that. We are to copy God. A reminder of who we are. Our role as, you better help me on this one, Kodashim. Kodashim. Holy ones. Don't let our old, unclean things come back among us. We will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't be deceived. We have been taken from the darkness 
into the light. So don't go back and fellowship with it. Awake and shine. Yeah. Awake and shine. Jesus is the way and the truth. No one goes unto the Father except through him. been redeemed born again I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus so be careful how you live not as fools, but as those who are wise. We are to copy God. Make the most of every opportunity for going, doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly. But try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. Well, as some of you guys know, I, I don't know if all of you know, but I am a game warden. I'm an investigator for our fishing game department here for the tram. In doing so, in working with, uh, with poachers and trying to catch those folks, we're one of the few fishing game departments in the country that works with nothing but a lot of bears. We're known for bears. We work a lot of bears. Uh, none of us look forward to this time of the year. Amen. None of us do. It's just preparing it. It's like when somebody turns on a light. The bear calls come in just like that. Everywhere. I mean, it is going back and forth from clear up to on the lake, clear down to Arlie and Everill. All the time. And the main thing is, they're in my garbage. Will you do something with them? Amen. <laughs> These folks live in the woods at the base of the missions. One of our worst enemies is BFI. Yeah. <laughs> the people who have uh, garbage containers. They have them everywhere. The bear is in my garbage. So when we go up there, we, we we're really leery about trying to, uh, to uh, just set traps anywhere. We get a lot of calls with a bear, which just runs from my yard up on the lake. A lot of folks don't know this country, so they're learning. They're learning what to do. And if they're not learning, then we try to educate them. We tell them, you know, you've you got to put your garbage away. This is a certain time of year. You got to put your garbage away. And then bring it out on pickup day. I know it's kind of hard, but put it in your, in your garage or in your shed and, and just uh, put it in there and then spray it with a Clorox or Purex water. It kind of holds down the stench. And it works. But the best, the best deterrent for bears is electric fence. Really. You would be surprised. We've been doing these studies for years, years, for electric fence. We've had people with the, the apiary people, the ones with the beehives. It took us years trying to convince these folks that you need to put electric fence up. So finally, we literally took our, our uh, biologists and they went over and they made these fences. They spent a lot of money doing this. And you know, bears and honey go together. Yeah. Go together. So they, <clears throat> they put these beehives in bear country, at the base of the missions, at the base of the wood areas. <sighs> so 
you guys got to do something with your bears. They're getting into my beehives. So we did. We went and set this up, and surprisingly, it worked. It stopped. In the last 20 to 25 years, we don't get very many calls from the apiary people. They put electric fence around all their beehives now. Now it's trying to, to convince others about it. The folks up at their lake, we let them know. You, if you got uh, those big uh, cherry orchards, put electric fence up. Apple trees. Um, bird feeders is another. Uh, and around the lake, bird feeders are a big attractant. But most of all is garbage. And in this, this here deal here, don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. And I think, what am I going to do here? And the Lord gave me a re revelation of this. A beast. A beast. A strong man. Evil beasts, strong men, demonic forces feed on garbage. Amen. We go home and, uh, and we try to sit there. We're trying to walk this walk the best we can. And we still, we, we sin, we do. And, and uh, God has done this, this spiritual thing with this. That he, he helps us to put this garbage in a can. A spiritual can. Then uh, one day out of the week, it's pickup day. You hear it? See where I'm going? We all come here and just lay the, and the, the, the servants of God, they take it away. Of course, we got those in authority. We got those in authority that we need something done right now. Pastor Lynn, y'all come over here. Mike, come over here. I need you right now. This beast has come here and infiltrated. And I don't know what to do about it. <clears throat> Sin is a stench to, to God. It's a stench. So what do we do? What do you do with all this stench? Somehow, some way in his divineness, the way he's shown me this. And you, can, you don't have to believe me. This is my, my little revelation, okay? But this is what he's shown me. That he takes this stuff and, and through his divineness, he puts it all together. And, and then we can come together and lay it before him. And his divineness, be it angelics or whatever, take it away. And they cast it into that pit. That lake of fire. Mm -hmm. That garbage dump. Amen. And he sit there and he show me that uh, sometimes when the olden authority come, sometimes it's taken, you know that the word of God is like a two-edged sword? Amen. You know? And the brother like uh, Lynn comes in with his his uh, game warden, his spiritual game warden thing on, and and he says, "Greater is he than me, and then he is in the world." <laughs> Taking care of, problems over. Well, it's not always like that, because the public eye, you know, they they don't like the way that's done. You hear where I'm going? You hear what I'm saying? So, we tell them, take this. Put this garbage away. It's, it'll be taken away. It'll be taken away. It's all going to be gone. But until that time, because of the stench, it's still going to draw that beast, that strong man. So through prayer, through prayer, and keep it uh, controlled, it makes a covering. 
And sometimes, most of all, it's the power. It's to be surrounded by the power of God. It's receiving that Holy Spirit. It's the only thing. It's the only thing that will keep back the strong man. Because he gives us and teaches us the power to use it. Every one of us have the authority to do so. It's just don't realize it. So we have to be taught. This is how you put it up. This is what you do. Put it here. Oh, you're going to have to put it a little bit low here. Because they're always trying to get underneath. Yeah. Always. So you've got to put it low. And a couple more strands. You've got to build that. Build that strength. Empower it. Put a good jolt in there. Learn how to use the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Get that Holy Ghost going. Yes. I sat there and I was trying to think, how am I going to do this without... I, I can't get this shuffle in like Glenn. <laughs> so I was trying to think, how am I going to do this? And I was trying to find this Ken doll with uh, red hair and beard. And I was going to go and sit his legs and just go like this. Here, <laughs> yes. But I'm afraid I'll probably trip and fall and break my neck. <laughs> I was trying to get this figured out the best way I could to, to get this message across. And I didn't expect to be here a long time. I don't have a lot and a lot to say, but I had this what the Lord showed me to say. Just like this little thing here. It's not to degrade anybody or anything else. It's where we're at. It's where we're at. We're to copy God. And a reminder of who we are. Our role as a Kadashim. Karoshim, Karoshim, one of the holy ones. Don't be deceived. We've been taken from darkness and brought into the light. Awake and shine. I believe before this ends, We've been doing a study, there are a few of us, on prayer and inner healing. There's going to be somebody here who's been healed of inner healing today. Someone's going to be healed. Or someone's. Whatever the Holy Ghost wants to do. I just ask that God do that, please. Wherever His presence is, there's freedom and liberty. Amen. Well, there's two or more gathered. He is there in his name. I have one, <clears throat> another deal here. Then you will sing psalms and hymns and, good, and spiritual songs among yourselves. And make music to God, to the Lord in your hearts. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, Amen. pure and holy, tried and true, Amen. with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary. For you. Oh Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll 
To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a As we was praying <clears throat> and singing, I believe someone's seen something in their heart. It might have been something that has happened to you in your life, in your past, lately. Something traumatic. Don't try to figure it out. Don't try to dissect it. Just ask God to please heal it. Heal me. Let it be like an onion. Take that, that outer covering. And as he goes with his love and compassion, let him bring healing. Let him bring restoration. Let it be so. Let it be so. And when anybody else comes to you and going through the same thing, And they ask, how do I make it? There's no hope. You can tell them, yes, there is. I've been there. I've done that. You know, Jesus touched my heart. He revealed that trauma. And he touched me with love and compassion and hope. And somehow, some way, joy. In Jesus' name. And you will always give thanks for everything. To God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's something very special in that, brothers and sisters. And you will always give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And through this, there's something that happens to each and every one of us. This is the bare facts. It's going to help us through the healing and restoration, whatever the Holy Ghost does with us. He'll help us as husbands. He's going to help us as wives and show us what to do in that Pacific realm. But in that, you have to come back Sunday to find out. Please rise. I want to know, let you know how special me personally <clears throat> that Lynn Lapka and his family is to me. There's stuff behind that. My own little inner healing. But in my prayer, I want to share the blessing that he always gives us. A reminder. He ain't dead. He's alive. 
But I want you to forget him. He's coming back. Amen. He's our pastor. Amen. Okay? As my friend would say, he's my pastor. <laughs> the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.